next person will be better dealing with that mic. And um, no, just say it now. I'll be seeing you again in December, though. Okay, so are there announcements? We have a service of Compline on Tuesday at seven o'clock. Okay, so that is that a special I, I, I saw for All Souls? Yes. Great, so it's All Souls service at, and this mic is on? I mean, yeah. it's okay that it's way over there? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, All Souls Tuesday at seven. So let's prepare ourselves for worship. Our opening here this morning is 229. community of St. Martin's acknowledges that we live, work, and worship on the ancestral and unceded land of the Coast Salish peoples, Musqueam, Squamish, and Siwatooth nations. May the reconciling love of Christ be reflected in our words and in our actions. And the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. In the collected prayer of the church for all saints, Lord of heaven's reach and of earth reborn, you call us from starless graves to sing under infinite skies. We praise your name for those who have walked this way unheralded and unnumbered, but known to you their beginning, their end, and their joy in life. Give us the same grace to be unbound and take the step of faith through Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. And let us listen to our first reading. The first lesson is written in the third chapter from the Wisdom of Solomon, beginning at the third verse. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, and their hope is full of but their hope is full of immortality. <clears throat> Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of Himself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like gold in the furnace, He tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, He accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth. They will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord.
The second lesson is written in the Revelation of John, the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 32nd verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was laying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, did I, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of Christ. 
Praise be to the name of Christ. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, today and always. Amen. We're celebrating All Saints today, though um, actually the official day is, of course, tomorrow, November 1st. Um, it all comes the day after Halloween, and it's followed by All Souls Day. All Saints celebrates and honors all those who have contributed successfully to the creation of the kingdom. But St. Paul lets us know, we hear from his letters, that the very early church, um, everyone was considered a saint. His letters are often addressed to the saints at Corinth or Galatia, and it didn't seem to matter that this often was just the wind up to letting them know they were not acting as proper Christians. So being a saint in the early church obviously was not connected to being a paragon of virtue. Some cultures like in Mexico or South American countries turn these days into a festival of remembering those who have gone before. Uh, the saints of the church that inspire us, as well as the saints in our own lives who have made a difference, either by their action or words or example. <clears throat> the people who have shown us grace, given us a glimpse of how we can more fully be the Christians we would like to be, or sometimes just lifting us up a bit when we were desperate. And strangely, sometimes those people weren't necessarily Christians, grace and love, uh, don't seem to worry so much about theology. And all three of the readings uh, this morning deal with uh, grief and death. In the gospel reading, we have the amazing moment where Jesus weeps when he sees the overwhelming grief of his friends. In the Revelation reading, we hear the promise that God intends to respond to the grief of every one of us, wipe the tears from every eye. I've always felt there's such a promise in that reading that God knows and understands our grief and pain and that we can hope at a certain point we will meet that God and God will respond to that grief. And the Old Testament reading um, is fascinating because it speaks of the souls of the righteous already being with God, free of torment. And I say fascinating because it actually sounds um, or did to me, like it, it could come from the New Testament. It, it's a very interesting reading. We live in a culture um, that is very ambivalent about grief, even a little negative towards it. People don't want to have funerals anymore, uh, so much as celebrations of life. And if, you think, and if we think you're taking too long and you're grieving, we suggest you go to grief counseling Though as an aside, the best part of grief counseling or grief groups is you get to be with people who allow you to express your grief. They do provide some really good stuff for people. Um, why this um, sort of anti-grief, we'll call it, is interesting that in an odd way that actually parallels um, something that's been a part of Christian understanding, which is, um, that it's not appropriate to grieve, to grieve over the death of a Christian, that they have died, they have gone to be with Christ, they are in the joy of Christ, and that we should um, be happy for them about that, and that it's sort of um, unfortunate to keep concentrating on our pain. And for a long time, um, uh, in the church, uh, 
like at a funeral or a memorial service, uh, you weren't allowed to have a eulogy talking about the person who died. There might be a few little references, but not much. The, the sermon was supposed to be about resurrection and the hopes of resurrection. But it just came to me as I'm saying that out loud that, that on some level, I wonder how many people we lost from the church of, you know, coming um, and having lost a few loved ones. I want to hear about my loved one, you know, that to me, I don't want to deny the resurrection, but there is a place where we want, because um, I think sometimes isn't that part of the pain of loss is that your life has been shattered and the whole world seems to be going on like nothing happened. And so, um, yeah, I just wonder how many people felt that they had uh, not been ministered to. Anyways, we have moved on from that mostly. The gospel reading which describes Jesus weeping when he encounters the mourners for Lazarus gives us another view. Honors our tears and grief, especially in the section just before this passage, Jesus seems to imply that he knows that he is coming to raise Lazarus from the dead. And in fact, this it's almost like you need to read this whole chapter before you, chapter 11, before you get a sense of um, Jesus being out teaching, uh, ministering, getting the message that Lazarus is ill. Um, and then, you know, the text definitely says he decides he stays two days longer than he had planned on. There's this whole thing that something is going on there. And then finally he comes um, to, to uh, be there. And one of the ways I see Jesus weeping that in his full humanity, he does understand the pain of loss, can feel what the two uh, sisters are going through. And as well, there may be another side to this, because another part in this John, reading from John's Gospel, because um, the raising of Lazarus is the last straw with the religious officials. It is, you know, very much the next chapter begins they begin to plot and plan, how can they get rid of this man? Because um, the raising of Lazarus is too much for them. Um, so his re releasing of Lazarus from death will lead to his own suffering and death. He goes towards that death willingly, but also in full awareness of the suffering that the cross will demand of him. And there are um, certainly some biblical scholars who think this is uh, John's uh, Gethsemane moment. Like he doesn't have that night at Gethsemane before uh, Jesus' death. Where, remember where Jesus uh, cries and, and is desperately um, and asks God, can you take this from me? But it's almost like this is a little bit of John talking about this place where Jesus is facing up to what is about to happen. Anyway, so Jesus knows that he will die because of what he is about to do. All real gifts are costly gifts. Some of our saints were also martyrs and their lives and storage and stories encourage us and lift us up. Uh, but many, um, but most of us have our own, uh, we have our own personal saints, people who lifted us up at a time. And I, I wonder like if we, had time to do this or ever did things like this in a church service, if we went around and gave everybody an opportunity to talk about the person in their life who had made such a difference by saying something or doing something or helping out. Um, well, we work could go on a long time and I bet you we could even go around a second time because we all have these stories. Um, And part of, again, back to this costly giving, I mean, there's a place where we understand that um, what people do for us is often, it is costly in some way, even if it's just their time, that they had thought enough that, to realize we might needed that kind of help. And I don't know, I have to tell you one of my favorite um, saint come out of nowhere to save me. Um, 
I, when I was at university, at University of Toronto, I had a terrible time with Spanish 100. Um, it's a long story about me and Spanish 100, but I will say I wrote five Spanish 100 exams. But anyways, they allowed me to continue into my second year carrying uh, Spanish 100. And I think I did slightly better than I usually did, but I still didn't do it. But I thought, no problem. This summer, I will focus uh, on it and we'll do the, the makeup exam that you can do in the summer. And I even uh, paid for uh, and got another student to tutor me through this, did the exam. And as I'm finding out, I didn't do that bad. I got 77 on the exam, uh, but I forgot that you have, that apparently if you did it in the spring term, you still have that old, um, term mark which meant boom i did not get the a i needed uh, to pass the exam and so i went to see the principal of the school this man stays in my memory who i did not know dr robinson and told him my tale of woe and he was very much and he said oh dear this doesn't sound good and he said well wait a minute and literally the man picked up his phone and phoned my spanish professor and said do you think maybe you were a little harsh with Miss Stanley? And um, and I can't imagine, because that Spanish professor was not fond of me. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me is thinking, I can't believe this. Anyway, so eventually what he did for me was he got the professor to give me a, a better mark, and um, it had to go through. He said, just start your third year. Um, and. Um, various things and i think somewhere in late november um, but i have often thought because that would have been such a disruption of a life that was i was not in great shape going through my undergraduate years as many students are um, but um, that it would have been so disruptive if i hadn't been able to just keep on going through that third year and i just thought what an amazingly kind man anyway sorry God bless your soul, Dr. Robinson. Um, anyways, um, I read an article some time ago, and it, it just always seems so true. It said one of the most dangerous phrases in our language is, is and now. You know, you hear that phrase all the time when you listen to the news. And now, um, you know, they tell you about some kind of disaster um, or awful thing going on somewhere and then they say and now and then they tell you something goofy about something a kardashian has done or whatever or you know even worse a really cute story about a puppy that got rescued in some special cute way but um what's so dangerous about it is it because what the and now says is forget about what i just told you listen to this story now, forget about that story, listen to this story. And I think it, it truly adds to how fragmented um, our brains get about what is happening and how um, we are engaged with the world. The Feasts of All Saints and All Souls are all about remembering the connections between ourselves and those who have gone before. I've been to <clears throat> Chartres Cathedral in France a number of times. It's, it's, just a wonderful place that unlike so many ancient churches it still has like it's almost 80 percent of what it was when it was uh, built in the 1200s um and it certainly has 80 percent of its uh, original windows and one of my favorite ones is just below the south rows and it well actually it's four lancets but it shows the four evangelists Matthew, Mark, uh, John, and uh, Luke. Thank you. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Um, I have it written, but it's very small. Anyways, uh, but they're young men, and they're literally sitting on the shoulders of the four great prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Daniel. So you have these young men sitting on these old guys. Um, it's just an amazing visual image that says clearly, if we see further or know more than those that have gone before, it's because we're standing on their shoulders. So the question becomes, how do we stay connected? How do we make sure we remember, honor the saints in our lives? 
Some of us do this quite naturally and easily. Uh, rituals, rituals don't need to involve special costumes or props. A visit to a special sh <clears throat> place, sharing a meal with others who remember. I, I always like when I go for walks around Stanley Park, like all the different benches, and you can see that they're in memoriam of somebody. My sister who died, oh, it's about 12 years ago now, she loved walking at the rifle. We would go to the rifle bird sanctuary when she came out to visit. And so often at special times like her birthday, I go there for a walk to think about her. Um, sometimes families make a pilgrimage to a special picnic spot or a, a camp uh, camping spot to remember someone they love who has passed. And of course, <clears throat> not all of the saints in our lives have died. Have you thought you should think of trying to at, at, let someone know how important they have been in your life? But sometimes, you know, even if it's some school teacher many years ago, if they're still alive, send them a note. And I really think it's fabulous that in our diocese, we've created um, the order of the diocese to honor lay people who have given so much of their time and energy to their parishes and the diocese. And if you've <clears throat> ever been, it's really quite moving because each person comes forward to receive their medal. A brief statement is read about why they were nominated. It's a powerful um, ritual. All of them just regular folks who had been hanging in there with their parishes for anywhere from 20 to 40 years, trying to do the work of the kingdom, taking part in committees, volunteering on countless projects to build new ministries and new possibilities in their parishes, not to mention putting up with how many different priests in that amount of time uh, that they've had to deal with. People who didn't give up and go away frustrated with the complications of parish life, people who are steadfast and loyal. Okay, to close, I want to uh, end by pointing to one important detail at the end of our gospel. After Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb and he appears, his hand and feet bound with strips of cloth, this and the side, that must have been quite a sight. Um, Jesus then speaks to the crowd. He doesn't do some sort of magic thing and make the um, bands of cloth fall away. He turns to the crowd and tells them, unbind him and let him go. Again, uh, that constant message from Jesus, we are to take care of one another. And what are saints, what are our saints, but people who took care of us in one way or another. So I wanna close this with a prayer. Holy and living God, help us to remember and honor all those who have been part of creating grace and love in our world. We give thanks for all the sacrifices and gifts we have received from the saints who have done so much for our world. We offer ourselves up to you in the name of the one who showed us how to love, how to take care of one another, and how we should love others as you have loved us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. In our prayers today, let us pray the Sunday prayer cycle, St. Martin, North Vancouver, St. Catherine, North Vancouver, the Reverend Sharon Smith, St. Hilda Seashelt, the Reverend Steve Black, and the Venerable Bruce Morris. Our companion parish, let us pray for St. Leo the Great, Sad Sudan, and San Luis Mabae in the Diocese of the Northern Philippines. And for parishioners in our regular prayer rota, we pray for Jan, Jim and Jennifer, Peter and Donna, and Elizabeth. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the prophets, the apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, hear our prayer. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, I thought were indeed against thy demandments. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our offertory hymn this morning is number 232 for all the saints.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things are of thee, and all thy God to come in the The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Be lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet in thy heart so too. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. For thou art the fountain of light and life for all thy creation, thou hast made us in thine own image and dost raise us to new life in Jesus Christ our Savior. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Mm -hmm. suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, we make before thee in this sacrament of the holy, holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he has commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion May be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, Lord without end. Amen. Thank you. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are fully to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, and all our glory, forever and ever. Amen. Can we stand for the Gloria? Foundation. 